Hello, welcome back to a new video. <sighs> I already filmed the entirety of this video, but I um, was filming it on my vlogging camera using the natural light or attempting to use the natural light again. And I had the brightness up way too much. So when I put it on my MacBook, I realized that the whole thing was just bleached out. So you could barely see me. So <laughs> I'm filming it again. I've got my proper setup with my lights and my tripod. And um, this video is actually gonna be about how I became a model. So thank you for so many of you guys who commented on my last video and also some of you inbox me with ideas for future videos, which is really helpful. A popular request was that I talk about modeling and it's something that I've kind of avoided for quite a while, like on my blog and YouTube and stuff. Not, not avoided, that's not the word. I just, I haven't really made it a point of topic because I just kind of always like to keep the two things separate, but um, I guess it is gonna be of interest to people and if I can share some of my knowledge, it might be fun for you guys to hear about. Also, I was thinking of kind of making this into a little series because once you go into it, there's like so much you can talk about. So if you guys have any questions below, I could do maybe a model Q&A eventually, like a, a modeling related one, anything about the industry. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking of maybe, you know, getting some friends on board, maybe like getting some of my model friends in for a few videos or something like that. Um, yeah, and just creating like a little, little series there. Cause I actually did a video last year back in April when I went to Cape Town for a shoot. And that was like called Model Life and then the name of the vlog, which I will link below if you want to check it out. So I thought it could like, that could be like the start of a little, little series. Um, so without further ado, before I waffle on way too much, I'm going to get on with this one, which is going to be all about how I became a model, where it all started. And then at the end, I'll kind of go through with a few tips that could help if some of you guys may be interested in like how to get started in modeling and things. Obviously, these are just my experiences. Everyone's can be very different. Um, but yeah, so it all started for me back in university. I was around a lot of like creative people and I was approached by photography students initially and they asked me if I wanted to test shoot with them and me being the massive poser I've always been, um, that was just sounded like good fun to me and you know, a great way to get some new profile pictures. <laughs> no, but I, I thought it would be good fun. Um, so yeah, I went along, shot with them, absolutely loved it, loved getting the shots. And then from there, I had some of their like fellow photography student friends get in touch and ask if I wanted to do shoots with them for their portfolio and for their uni work. And at this point, it was always just a hobby for me. It was just a thing that I could just do in my spare time. I got pictures from it. Um, it was a way to be creative and it was just good fun. Then from there, I ended up setting up um, a Model Mayhem profile. This is like going way back in the day now. I don't even know if this website exists, but it's kind of like where amateur models and things would go to kind of connect with photographers and other creatives to sort of build a portfolio. Um, it is kind of, I mean, I've not even heard anyone talk about it for years, but I, I remember at the time it wasn't like seen as like the best approach to take in the industry, but because I wasn't really taking it overly serious, it didn't really bother me. So yeah, I was just like connecting with people through there. And then professional photographers got in touch with me through that and wanted to shoot. And with these things, if you ever, you know, are connecting with anyone online, um, especially just like a random photographer, you need to check them out. Do not like go and meet people willy nilly. I think one of my first shoots with a professional photographer, um, you know, that was outside of university. Uh, I'm sure I took Damien along to that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did, yeah. So I took my boyfriend along to my first shoot. Oh, I remember that one actually. He ended up being legit and yeah, it was it was fine. And I ended up shooting with him a few times after that. But yeah, just always be really careful. So anyway, <laughs> getting back on track. I shot with a few professional photographers and from there I started to build like a, a real portfolio. But at this point it was still just fun. And I graduated from university at this point. I just, it was not even a thought to like go down the modeling route. I was looking for postgraduate jobs. Wasn't really bothered in what genre um i just wanted to make money i got so bored of the broke life like i had a lot of fun in uni i really enjoyed it but i was done with being broke <laughs> so i was just looking for work like i was just like modeling for me was not an idea of something that i could realistically make money i was like i need a job i need a job um but i wasn't really getting anywhere with that 
And then a couple of the photographers that I used to work with quite a bit, um, they were suggesting like, you know, you should go to an agency, you should do it. And I was, I was like, nah, because I always had that idea in my head of like a very specific type of model, which is what I knew I wasn't. And I get, I don't know why, I just never even thought that commercial modeling was a thing. In my head, I thought model, you know, high fashion, walking down the catwalk for Versace at fashion week. I know nothing about that stuff, but in my head I was thinking, you know, 5'11", tiny, and I knew I wasn't that. I've always had more of an athletic build, and yeah. Um, but they assured me that no, like, go to an agency and there'll be work and whatever. And it was only after, like, I think I'd been out of uni for six months, so it was like the new year after graduating, and I was getting nowhere with, a, with these jobs, like, work was just not coming my way. So I was like, whoa, this is, you know, less resort now and I always had nothing to lose so I did in fact apply to an agency um, and then they called me in and yeah and then they they signed me and that's kind of how I ended up with my first agency and that's my agency in Manchester and then two weeks after that I actually got my first job which was good because it kind of started kind of early on um which is funny because I remember when I signed with this agency um I was quite excited and I told my mother and she was like hmm we'll see <laughs> you're like bringing me back down to earth like quite skeptical but it's good because I'm a realist like that as well so I'm trying not I tend to not get over excited about things until they come to light come to light you know until they actually happen so yeah it actually started to happen I started to work and it was all good I do have to say though that alongside modeling the first couple of years of me doing it I also did promotional work alongside that but modeling was my main income but as it is you know you're working self-employed it can go like it's like a little bit of a little bit of a roller coaster there so um the promo work was kind of handy for when i had the dips um in periods and then i could kind of like even it out with that and then since then i've carried it on and i've done it for like five years now as my full-time job and then more recently i've started blogging as well so i kind of like i still do modeling i do blogging as well and yeah that's me at the moment so that's how it all happened i feel like i've said it in a way that made it sound like so swift and easy it was kind of like a it was a it was a bit of a long road i guess um longer than it sounds but yeah that's how it happened for me and a couple of you guys asked about the fitness sports aspect of my modeling because i do get booked on a lot of fitness and sportswear jobs and my agency in london actually specializes in it, in it so you get a lot of clients going directly for them for like you know runners and athletes and things like that but i actually started getting booked for sports and fitness straight away my first ever job with my agency was for um, a sportswear brand if you're from the uk i don't know if you'll remember but it was jjb like they actually closed down but at the time they were like a really a big sportswear brand so that was my first ever shoot i remember being quite excited about that and um, so it was fun to do a campaign for them and i remember like doing yoga and things like that on the shoot um so yeah i think for me, I kind of fell into that genre because I do have an athletic look, but really it's been very varied. I do lingerie, I do like smiley commercial, I do a little bit of serious, even though I'm really not serious in real life. Um, so yeah, it really, really does vary. If you are kind of looking to go more down the sports and athletic side of things, because there are some models that just predominantly do sport and fitness, um, then the most easiest tip that I can give is to get fit. <laughs> um, you know, showcase your sporting skills. Obviously it's kind of like half being fit and athletic and sporty and half posing and looking like a model. So um, if you can do both, then great. I think these days with social media and things, like the game has changed a lot in terms of modeling, especially since um, from when I started. When I started like, I don't even think Instagram, no, Instagram wasn't even a thing when I started. So, you know, clients weren't looking at your online portfolio in terms of like you personally. It was just kind of, they book you from what they saw on the website or at casting. Whereas now there's a whole social media presence. We're seeing more influencers become models and things like that. So it's really changing up the game. So if you do feel like you can show your athletic ability um, and you think that you could kind of work from that, then show that, you know, show yourself working out, show yourself running or like doing gymnastics and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, and then just get in touch with these agencies and then hopefully they'll be able to see your ability 
possibilities and um, yeah, things might go from there, you never know. Right, before I waffle on too much, I need to like focus. Thank you in future videos, I'm gonna get organized. I'm gonna get a notepad and I'm gonna write everything down because otherwise I waffle. I also need a timer so I don't go on for too long. Um, but tips, how you can get into modeling. The two kind of really obvious ways are to either apply online or go into a walk-in. A lot of agencies have set times when you can just walk in and see them, which can kind of seem like the most daunting way, but actually it's probably the best way because you're gonna get an answer on the spot basically. So you don't have to like send off your application and wait for weeks or however long, because sometimes they might not even get back to you because if they are having a busy period and they don't see your application, then you know you can kind of get lost amongst others kind of thing. Um, I actually did do the, the, the chicken out way and sent my application online. I wasn't quite ready to do a walk-in, but if I was gonna do it now, I'd just, I'd walk in there. I'd be like, I don't care. But yeah, uh, you can go into the agency and see them or send photos online. A lot of them will request for Polaroids. And this is just basically a snap, just like a, a photo. You can take it on your phone. If you've got like a high quality camera, most phones do these days but just make sure that it's bright clear light where fitting clothes a typical model outfit would be skinny jeans a tight vest top or t-shirt just something that shows off your figure heels um and then pose you know like not too much but just you know show them what you got honey um little to no makeup and then just send those like you don't need a full portfolio like i was look, lucky that I had a portfolio, but you don't need one. Whatever you do, do not pay hundreds of pounds or dollars on a portfolio. It's just not necessary. It doesn't need to be done. Um, no, like if an agency will know if they want to work with you, if they can get you work just from looking at you as you are, from seeing your Polaroids. So please don't get conned into any of these weird things with like spending loads of money. However, once you're like with an agency that's legitimate, they can sometimes recommend you to photographers who may charge you for a shoot, but it shouldn't be a huge amount and some agencies will tend to like take that out of your future earnings. It just, it really, really depends, but just be careful. Make sure that the agency that you're applying to or the agency that approaches you, just check them out first online. Like it's so easy to do these days to check people out and just check that they're legitimate, you know, have a nosy on the site. What what do the, the models look like? Does it look like they're getting work and all this? Social media is great, check out their Instagram. So just be really safe about it, especially if you're under a certain age, um, you know, you don't wanna be getting yourself in any weird situations. And also like similar to what I did with photography students, if you kind of want to practice with modeling um, and maybe you are a student and you feel like, you know, you could get in there and uh, give them a pose, why not just approach other fellow students, you know, photography students so many times they want subjects um, to work with for shoots and things because it's gonna help them as much as it's gonna help you. So it's worth really reaching out to people like that and it's fun and creative and you can make friends with people and it's a great way to practice. The final thing that I need to end on is I would say if you are thinking of going into modeling, do not go into it if you feel like you have low self-esteem. Um, I haven't had like really bad experiences or anything like that, but I do feel like I went into it when I was very sure of myself. Um, I felt kind of confident with myself, so I was ready to take any rejection that may come my way. I mean, nothing really bad has happened, but you can't, you're not gonna get every single job from every single casting you go to, you know? But then you have to remember for every client that won't like you, another one will. The same with agencies, just because one doesn't like you doesn't mean that they all won't. But you really just have to have a thick skin about it. Um, just be confident, be happy in yourself. It is just, it is a fickle thing at the end of the day. So you can't let anything that anyone says to you, you can't take it personally. Yeah, just, just don't worry about it too much. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not, that much of a big deal and yeah i don't really know how else to end this um but yeah i will end it here because there is more i could talk about but i think i should save those for future videos if any of you guys are curious hopefully that could help some of you guys and give you a little bit of an insight into getting into the commercial modeling world and the sports and the fitness and all that stuff um if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to give it a like a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!